Hello, welcome to the Friday, July 19th, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Swindon, England. One technology to better control who is able to connect to your network is 802.1x and with that it directly applies to critical control number one which has at its focus an inventory of all systems connected to your network. Now implementing 802.1x is often a daunting task and a lot of administrators are shying away from it. Now to help you a little bit out here, Rob has today published some tips how to implement 802.1x in a Windows environment. So if you're interested in this, take a look at it and uh, see if this will help you implement this technology. And when it comes to TLS, uh, probably the simplest way to intercept TLS is to get users to accept your certificate authority and then to set up a proxy that will intercept TLS connections. Now, there have been many attempts over the years to do this on a large scale country level. And back in 2016, Kazakhstan made news by actually trying to have its certificate authority added as a trusted certificate authority to browsers. While that attempt failed, they just recently now started to mandate that users in Kazakhstan will add their certificate authority, their country level certificate authority to browsers in order to allow for traffic inspection. There has been some discussion and I'll link to that in the show notes on the Mozilla security list, how to respond to these kind of actions. Now, one option of course would be for browsers to blacklist uh, these certificate authorities. So even if a user adds them manually, they wouldn't really work. Certificate pinning, uh, while it's uh, no longer really in use, would potentially offer a solution here, but turns out that browsers who did implement certificate pinning did allow the override for certificate authorities that users specifically installed. Looks like so far a compromise that may be developing here is to just add a more prominent visual indicator if such a certificate authority is used to verify a particular site, essentially to warn the user that the connection may be intercepted. These type of intercepting proxies are somewhat common in enterprise environment where of course the organization may have some responsibility to safeguard customer data that can't really be easily safeguarded without inspecting egress TLS traffic. And the Financial Crime Enforcement Network, which is part of the US Department of Treasury, has published the latest statistics when it comes to business email compromise. And well, no big surprise here, it's still a very lucrative business. The statistics essentially cover everything up to the end of 2018, and the average monthly losses reported are in the 300 to 400 hundred million dollar range. One point highlighted in the report is that the top three target industries aren't necessarily what you sort of would consider with like you know usual financial crime or high-tech crime. It's manufacturing and construction, commercial services, and real estate. I've looked in the past in particular in the real estate component here and that's certainly a huge target in particular due to some of the large amounts of money transferred. The top methodology being used here is still fraudulent vendor invoices. So I think you know, one of the countermeasures here is probably some more rigid controls around when such invoices are being paid. 
One thing that differentiates FinCEN from sort of your normal law enforcement agency is that they're also very actively interested in recovering funds. So they work with victims, they work with banks in order to try to get as much of the money that was misdirected here back to the victim. And since 2014, they have been successful in recovering about $500 million, which of course is not really a huge percentage of all the money lost here, but at least it's something. And probably one important thing here to note is that it's very important if you are the victim of business email compromise to notify FinCEN, notify your bank really quickly in order to be able to freeze and recover these funds. And Australian security company Skylight discovered a pretty interesting weakness in Silence's algorithm to detect and distinguish malware from non-malicious software. Silence made a name for itself by offering an anti-malware engine that is artificial intelligence based. And well, the problem, of course, with artificial intelligence is sometimes that it's still based on algorithm. It's still essentially deriving signatures, but it's not always that obvious what the signatures look like or what the actual properties are that this particular artificial intelligence algorithm uses to make its decision. By using debug logs in Silence, Skylight researchers were able to find that Silence's algorithm is somewhat biased towards a couple of specific harmless games. And they were able to actually mask malware and not have it detected as malicious by Silence's algorithm if they included various strings from these popular games. So in essence, what they were able to deduct is parts of the algorithms, the signatures being derived by Silence's artificial intelligence algorithm, and they were then able to use this against the software. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.